Jerry at Fair Oaks. Dugan, you finally learned not to talk in ranks, huh? Yes, Phillips. The spirit of do or die has finally got me. <laughs> oh, say, there's Harold coming over here. I'll bet he's going to ask us to go with him to his dad's cottage. Yes, I'll bet so, too. Hello, Harold. Hello, fellas. Hiya, Cadet Linwell. Hey, would you like to go over and see the cottage Mrs. Gardner got for my dad? <laughs> what I tell you, Lee? <laughs> yeah, you were right as usual. Sure, Harold, we'd like well, to... Well, uh, we'll walk to the front gate with you, Harold, but Lee and I have got to go over to Max a minute. Oh, yeah, that's right. I almost forgot. Well, can you come over later? Sure, you bet. We'd like to. That is, uh, if it's right with your dad. Oh, of course it's all right. He told me to have you come over with me. You just ask him. Ask him? Yeah, he's meeting us at Custis Hall. He's talking to Captain Gardner. Oh, I see. Well, come on. We'll walk over there with you. Well, did you have a good time at the Gardner's house last night? You bet we did. Dad and Captain Gardner got to talking about the Army. Army? Was your dad in the Army? Well, not the regular Army, but he's a major in the reserves right now. Gee, I didn't know that. Maybe we should call him Major Linwell. Oh, I don't think so. You know, I told you he doesn't like any kind of a fuss, and so he just likes to be called Mr. Oh, hey, Harold, there's your dad. Where? Oh, yeah, I see him, up at the top of the steps. Yeah. Hello, Dad. Hello, son. Come on, let's run. Okay. Yeah, come on. Here, here, here. Take it easy. I'll still be here. Sure, we know that, but I want to spend all the time I can with you while you're here. Oh, well, that's great. Ready to take a jot over the cottage, boys? Well, uh, if you don't mind, Mr. Linwell, we'll let you go on with Harold right now. We want to go over to Max's place for a few minutes. And then we'll come right over, Mr. Linwell. Very well. Shall we go? All mm -hmm. right, come on. How are you feeling, Mr. Linwell? The trip to Fair Oaks didn't tie you out too much, did it? Oh, no. And I got some fine rest last night. I think Mrs. Gardner's dinner helped quite a bit, too. <laughs> you bet it did. Oh, you think so, too, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Just a second. I'll open this other door. Here. Oops! Ooh, oh, careful, Mr. I Linwell. I think to get a rubber tip for this old crutch of mine. <laughs> I'm not very used to it. I wonder where you'd be able to get one in Farrell's. Oh, I think any drugstore would carry them. I'll run over to Mason's drugstore and get one for you before we call, Dad. Huh? Oh, oh no, Harold. I'll get one later. Well, why, Dad? It won't take me very long to run over to Mason's. Well, maybe your father would like you to visit with him right now, Harold. Uh, oh, that's it. We can both go over later. Anyway, I've got to get some exercise. The doctors told me my recovery is up to me from now on, and that exercise is an important part of it. Oh, yeah, I see. Harold! Oh, yeah? Around this way. Gee, I forgot. <laughs> uh, what's all that about? Well, you see, sir, plebes can't go through the small arches. It's a tradition at Fair Oaks. Oh, I understand. I don't suppose that affects fathers of plebes, too, does it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, sir. <laughs> Well, all right, here we are. Well, we'll see you boys later, huh? Mm, yes, sir. Uh, so long, fellas. Goodbye. Goodbye. See, you see you later. Let's walk around this side of the street, son. Golly, I, I thought for a minute Harold okay, was going to catch on. I mean, the reason why his dad didn't want him to be running around Fair Oaks alone. Well, I don't think he'd know anything about the reason, but 
Well, if Mr. Linwell hadn't said what he did about exercise, Harold might have thought something was up. Yeah. Uh, go ahead, Lee. Oh, thanks. <laughs> hey, listen to Max singing. <laughs> yeah, me and General Ben would make a pair, wouldn't uh -huh. they? <laughs> He's probably experimenting with his chemicals back there. <laughs> Gee, something exploded. Come on, Jerry, let's see what happened. Listen. Oh, for the love of Mike. <laughs> Max! <laughs> <laughs> yes, and a couple of pretty scared customers, if you ask me. Well, hello, Dee. Hello, Jerry. Scared? What about? <laughs> what happened back there, Mac? Gee, we thought you were hurt. Hurt? <laughs> Not William McLeod, lads. <laughs> you mind? There's an old saying, and a true one, careful preparation averts disaster. No, no, lads. I, I wouldn't be hurt as long as I read the books well and follow the directions. Well, uh, what were you making? Oh, me, oh, nothing, nothing in particular. Just experimenting. Uh, just experimenting. Well, lads, uh, what do you have today? Well, I think I'll have a dish of strawberry ice cream, Mac. Yeah, so will I. Well, well, what's this, Jerry? No chocolate for you today? No, I just feel like strawberry. Oh, well, no, I, I wouldn't say you look like one. Like what? Uh, like a strawberry. Oh, oh go on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there you are, lads. Thank you. Uh, well, lads, it's good to see you here again. Rosh, it's, it's been about a week since you've been in Mark's place. Yeah. Oh, uh, say, Mac. Aye, oh, yeah, aye, Jerry. Uh, do you want to know what this stuff about Harold was last week? I mean, why we had to keep him here so he'd miss recall? Well, uh, I, I think I can know. You mean you know? I, I think I do. But how could you? Well, uh, Corporal Dent was in a couple of days back, and uh, he told me all about your excursion to Woodman's Island. He did? Aye, aye, he did. He swore me to secrecy, though. I, he, he made me promise I wouldn't talk about it with anyone but you lads. Well, what did he tell you, Matt? Well, he told me, uh, he told me about the newspapers from Wardville and how the headlines about Harold's feather were there, but not the account itself. Uh, he told me, too, that you had all decided that whoever it was that was out there on the island was very, very interested in Harold's feather and probably in Harold himself. That's right. Huh? Oh, I, I think it was a mighty fine thing you did, lads. Aye, uh, mighty fine. Uh, sacrificing yourselves to ensure Harold's safety. Oh, that, that wasn't anything. Oh, no, Mac. It, it just happened that we found that stuff out there in the shack instead of some of the other cadets. I mean, if anyone else had been with Corporal Dent, they would have done the same thing for Harold. Oh, well, no, I, I didn't care about that. Uh, say, Mac. Aye? Uh, did Corporal Dent tell you about what else we found there? I mean, besides the newspapers? Well, no, I... Oh, Excuse me, lads. I'll, I'll wait on this oh, question. Sure, you bet. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, what can I do for you? Your pardon, please. Do you have uh, stationery? Stationery? I, I, I do. I should like to buy an envelope. Who is that, Lee? No, no, no. I've never sir. seen him before. What size envelope He speaks with like? an accent, it doesn't he? Mm -hmm. legal papers. It should be quite large. I, I, here is the legal size envelope right here. Ah, yes. Now, let me see whether or not they will fit in. Aha. Uh -huh. This is exactly right, thank you. <laughs> now, uh, do you sell postage stamps? Uh, stamps, I, I, I do. Uh, how many? Well, uh, enough to send this by airmail. Oh, well, I'd say, uh, I'd say it would be about uh, two ounces. Uh, here you are, sir. Mm, thank you. Now, uh, how much do Funny you Funny looking fellow, isn't he? Jerry. Oh, about 15 well, cents and would yours. be very well. Fifteen cents. <laughs> You are very reasonable, my friend. Well, I, I try to be. <laughs> That's the manner in which I keep my customers. Yes, <laughs> I understand, of course. A, uh, a great number of your customers are probably boys from that school, eh? I they are in good, steady customers. They are, too. Mm, I should imagine. Mm. When, when do they usually come in? Oh, about this time. Sometimes a wee bit earlier, on the days when they don't have uh, the drill, you can. I understand. Do you mind if I address this envelope here? I wish to post it in the Lee. box outside. Yeah, oh, yeah I see not. it. Take the time. You need not wait. That is all I desire at this time, please. Oh, uh, yes, sir. <laughs> Thank you kindly. Well, lads, uh, <clears throat> how are you getting on with your ice cream? Huh? Oh, oh swell, Mac. Yes, swell. Well, what's ailing you, lads? You, you look like you've seen a ghost. Mac, yeah? that's the man who was out on the island in the shack. What? Well, uh, how can you tell? You didn't see the man. No, but, Mac, that man right there addressed that envelope with a fountain pen. Aye, aye, a gold one, and a very beautiful one it was. But you don't understand, Mac. Didn't Corporal Dent tell you about the gold pencil we found in the shack? Gold pencil? No, no, he didn't tell me. Well, we found one, 
and it was exactly the same as the fountain pen that that man used just now. It was? Exactly. Gee, I had goose pimples all over me when I saw that fountain pen. Lee, really? come on. Where? Well, we're going to follow that man. Oh, 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 Jerry. Oh, no, wait. You didn't do that. No, no, no. I, I, we're not alone. Mac, we, we've just got to see where he goes. We'll be careful. Okay, I'm with you, Jerry. Oh, no, lads. Uh, please listen to old McLeod. I think it's very, very dangerous for you to do a thing like that. Oh, look, look. It's almost time for a recall. Uh, you can't pull that on us, Mac. We know what time it is. We've still got about an hour and a half before recall. Come on, Lee. Yeah. Oh, I didn't think you can what you're getting into, Jerry and Lee. I, I didn't think Major Davis would like you to get yourselves mixed up in anything like this. If this really is the man that is. We'll be careful, Mac. Well, see that you do, lad. See that you do. Losh. There he is, walking down Court Street. Yeah, I see him. He's walking pretty fast, isn't he? Yeah. Hey, come on. Let's cut across the corner of the outer campus and duck behind those trees. Okay, come on. Gee, he walks fast. Yeah, he sure does. Say, we'd better slow down, though. He might see us. Uh-huh. Look, Jerry. What? There's Ralph Humrick coming up toward that man at the corner of Court and Birch. Oh, yeah. He, the man, stopped Ralph. Yeah. And now Ralph's pointing at the cottage guy Linwell lives in. Gee, I, I wonder... Jerry, I think this is the man. Sure he is. He's asked Ralph what house Guy Linwell lives in, and Ralph pointed it out to him. Oh, gee, he shouldn't have done that. Who, Ralph? Oh, he doesn't know anything about the man. Yeah, I, I know, but oh, it's too bad he doesn't. Hey, look, Lee. Now the man's walking up and down in front of Mr. Linwell's house. Uh-huh. And Ralph's walking this way. Yeah, but on the other side of the street. He won't see us. I hope not, because we mustn't let anybody know we're suspicious of that I man. should say not. Hey, the man's walking away, down Court Street. Yeah. He isn't walking as fast as he was before. Yeah, I noticed that. Say, did you hear him ask Mac about when the boys from the school came into his store? Yes, I did. I wonder if he was thinking about Harold when he asked Mac that. Well, sure, who else could he be thinking about? We know he's the man who was in that shack on Woodman's Island. We know he's the one who cut out those stories in the paper about Harold's father. Yeah, that... Hey! What? Look, he's turned into that driveway down at the end of the block. Yes, sir. And he's walking across that lawn toward that other house. Why, that's Mrs. Cooper's boarding house. Yes, I know it. Jerry, he's going in. Why, that must be where he lives. Uh-huh. Come on, Lee. Where to? We've got to tell Mr. Linwell all about this man. And we've got to get to Mr. Linwell's cottage before the man has a chance to get up to his room, wherever it is. Well, why? Don't you see? While he's walking upstairs, we'll walk across and get into Mr. Linwell's house. That way, the man won't know that we followed all the way for Max. You're right, Jerry. Come on, let's run. <laughs> <laughs> 